The waters of Al Dhafra in the western region of Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates, on the shores of the Arabian Gulf, hold hidden secrets. The remote and wild area has been integral to the survival of our people, the Emiratis, for over 7,000 years. For eons, we have learned to live in balance with the sea creatures that also live here. Species that are close to our heart, the dugong and its seagrass beds, our dolphins and their home ranges, our seabirds and their islands, our fish species that have nourished and sustained us, and in my view, the jewel of them all, our turtles. In Abu Dhabi, we have two of the seven species of turtles found on our planet both of which are threatened, the critically endangered hawksbills and the endangered giant green turtles. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hind Al-Amri, an assistant scientist at the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi, where I work with a passionate team of scientists on the conservation of our sea turtles and marine species. We have a wonderful team and they all love turtles. I love them too. Growing up, I think I got the best of both worlds. Where my father's family had roots in the desert, my mother's family were based on the coast. During high school, my nickname was Hin the Turtle. And it's not because I was slow, but it was more because I was calm and patient. And I think that all fed into my subconscious. And when I came to join the Environment Agency, the Marine Turtle Program was a perfect fit. My name is Ibrahim Abdullah Bagla. I have been in the sea my whole life. First as a pearl diver, then as a scuba diving master instructor. I also used to be a pilot, but I love the sea more than the sky. Now I work in my passion to study the sea turtles, the dugongs, and the dolphins. With the studies we are doing now, we are finding new things out about them. And this information helps us support in their management. Growing up in Abu Dhabi, we used to do a lot of island hopping, and we used to come across dolphins, turtles, and dugongs. And that one time, we found an abandoned fishing net with a marine turtle stuck inside. That's when I knew that I wanted to work in the field of conservation. Our marine environment is a unique body of water. Young in geological terms, it used to be a low-lying coastal basin, forming the southern part of the Fertile Crescent, where civilization is said to have begun. The modern-day Gulf flooded only around 8,000 years ago, and our ancestors moved to and thrived on this new coastline. The marine biodiversity flourished in what is now one of the most extreme seas in the world. With temperatures of between 16 degrees Celsius in winter and 36 degrees in summer, all sea creatures and their habitats have adapted to and are existing at the limit of their livable range. Unique biodiversity migrated and found their home in the shallow coastal basin which on average is about 50 meters deep. On offshore islands in the isolated Al Dhafra region of Abu Dhabi, two species of sea turtles, green and hawksbills, found their way here and made the Arabian Gulf home. Turtles are a key indicator on the health of our ecosystem. Environment Agency Abu Dhabi is the environmental regulator, but also the scientific research organization for the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. It was established in 1996, and we are very proud to carry on 
and continue the strong legacy of our UAE's founding father, the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, by exemplifying his values for conservation. Turtles are as old as the dinosaurs and have been around for 200 million years. And they both depend on two completely different habitats. Hawksbill tend to feed around coral reefs, while green turtles feed on seagrass. And that brings us to Rutina because it's a huge seagrass pasture where we can find hundreds and hundreds of sea turtles in any given year. One of our special atolls is one of the few places in the world where you find them both living in relative abundance. Butina, one of the jewels of the Arabian Gulf. Steeped in the history of the pearl divers and fishermen of old and recorded in local song, <laughs> This tiny archipelago with extensive seagrass beds and coral reef formations is a biodiversity hotspot. Located around 130 kilometers west of Abu Dhabi city in Al Dhafra's Marawah Biosphere Reserve, Butina is a haven for wildlife. Mangroves have gained a foothold here, surrounding a natural lagoon, which is a regular stopping point for migratory flamingos. Three species of terns have turned Butina into a nesting ground. They are everywhere. With the abundance of food, birds of prey have also set up residence here. The osprey or seahawk regularly feasting on fish and other seabirds. A resident pod of dolphins patrols the island with herds of dugong, also regular visitors. The atoll has relics of an ancient past, a popular stop of point for the pearl divers and a reflection of how hard life used to be. Today is a very exciting day because we're heading out to our Hawksville Annual Nesting Survey. We have been hearing that they've been nesting over the past couple of days and we hope to see some tonight. There's a turtle. Our Environment Agency team has arrived on Botina with some important work on the agenda. So we've arrived at Guadalina and now we're going to go around the nesting beach to collect any data we may find. I'm here with Dr. Das, our unit head of marine threatened species and habitats, and the person who set up our turtle monitoring program back in 2002. He's a fantastic mentor. This is an interesting case. This turtle nested here on 24th of April and she has digged out these old eggshells. It will not be a surprising that the same turtle nested here last year or year before and came back to the same place because these hawksbills are living within the Arvan Gulf and they are not migrating long distances. From our monitoring, we know that there are around 1,500 hawksbill turtles who nest across five of Abu Dhabi's offshore islands, all in Al Dhafra region and our satellite tagging work on Hawksville has indicated that they all stay within the Arabian Gulf. So we have these tiny little boxes which calculate temperature for us. So we're going to be putting them inside the sand at a depth of 40 centimeters, which is the average depth of the nests of the Hawksville turtles for us to determine the temperature during the nesting season. Butina is very low lying, about half a meter above sea level. If sea level rise continues in line with global projections, 
this critically endangered species will lose a key nesting beach. But it's really surprising that the turtle would actually come back to the same location to nest, even after a few years. But sometimes, unfortunately, these uh, coastlines are degraded and turtles don't find the place where they nested previously. What they do, they look for adjacent areas to nest, but if all these coastlines gone, then we are going for a population loss. On our way to the next island, I felt a little bit queasy. Some might call it being seasick. I have felt this a few times when the weather is a little rough, but I always push through. I have to. I couldn't let these creatures down that I have loved since I was a child, overcoming challenges for the greater good. Women in the UAE can do anything. On this island, because there are cliffs or steep inclines where the beaches are, with sea level rise, this island may not hold suitable nesting beaches in the future. Our hawksbills will need to learn to adapt. Sometimes we have turtles that nest in the wrong place, in the lower intertidal zone, where they would definitely flood. And it's because of this, and to support in conservation efforts, we at the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi have moved those eggs and put them above the high tide line under a simple shelter. We will find out if this climate change adaptation approach is successful in a couple of months' time when the turtles hatch. Turtles, a species that we want to help to adapt to climate change. The threats to our turtles here in Abu Dhabi and United Arab Emirates are consistent with those facing turtles globally. They include coastal habitat destruction, waste like single-use plastic entering the environment, where it is being ingested by our turtles, abandoned illegal fishing gear, and climate change. Single-use plastic entering the environment where it causes harm is one of the key threats facing turtles and the marine environment. It is an international challenge with 13 million tons of plastic entering the marine environment every year. All marine biodiversity is affected by plastic, from seabirds to fish to dolphins. Turtles. In the Arabian Gulf, a study completed by our Sharjah colleagues found that 12 of 14 turtles on the Arabian sea coast of the UAE had ingested plastic. Recent studies have shown that nearly 100% of turtle hatchlings will ingest plastic in their juvenile years. Many will die from it. In our most recent study in Sorbonne University, We've collaborated with the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi to look at the stranded juvenile hawksbill turtles on Abu Dhabi's coastline. Unfortunately, 80% of the dead turtles had plastics inside of them. Given the amount of plastic we found in the gastrointestinal tracts of the turtles, it is very likely that these plastics are a contributing factor to their death. And we are talking about very young turtles, six or seven months old. Them to find plastics this early makes us wonder just how much plastic is out there. And the sad part is that the found inside the turtles are all recognizable. These are things every day. Balloons from our birthday parties, coffee cups, shopping bags. So this means that we are responsible for what's happening to the turtles. In response to the effect of single-use plastic on our marine biodiversity, particularly on turtles, we launched this year a comprehensive single-use plastic policy in Abu Dhabi. The policy will respond to the top 16 global single-use plastics found on beaches. This would include a ban on plastic bags, a levy on items that have a reusable alternatives, and a bottle return scheme so we don't see plastic bottles littering on our coastline and on our offshore islands where our turtles nest. Earlier this year, we at the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi hosted the World Ocean Summit in Abu Dhabi. A declaration to clean up Abu Dhabi's marine environment was signed with government entities and private companies agreeing to clean up Abu Dhabi's marine environment of plastic waste.
Every quarter for the next year, community groups and schools will clean up beaches, identifying, through a modern mobile phone app, the types of plastics that are being found on beaches. This information will help support change initiatives to reduce the amount of waste entering the marine environment where it's causing harm to our turtles. Another threat to turtles in the UAE is habitat destruction. Our major offshore islands, where our hawksbills nests, are protected. They fall within the Zayed network of protected areas, which includes six marine protected areas, ranging from Silla in the far west of Abu Dhabi to close to the borders with Dubai and Gantut. The key habitats, the coral reefs and the seagrass beds on which our turtles feed, are also protected from development, with government entities working together on redesign and relocation for critical national infrastructure projects. Abandoned or illegally used fishing nets are also a key threat to our marine turtles and also to our dugong population. Our dugong population is around 3,000 and is considered the second largest population outside of Australia. In 2018, in response to an increase in the number of dugong and turtle deaths caught in abandoned or illegal fishing nets after consultation with the fishing community, it was agreed to close the netting season until alternatives could be found. Our government takes the health of our marine wildlife seriously, alhamdulillah. And we get the community involved. Sometimes our hawksbills wash up on our beaches suffering from thermal shock. And that happens when the temperature goes below the expected 17 degrees. Often these guys are covered with barnacles and that's because they become lazy and docile in winter. We rehabilitate them, firstly in fresh water, to assist in the removing of the barnacles. And then after they have regained their strength, we get the community involved and release them back into the sea. These release days, like the most recent one on Sardiyat Beach, are special, with local kids being able to get up close and personal to a critically endangered species. Overall, I would say we're working hard on solutions to manage the threats to our turtles and finding more out about them so we can support in their regional management. It was a busy period for our Abu Dhabi scientists and studying hawksbill turtles was not the only turtle conservation project happening in the UAE's waters of the Arabian Gulf. A collaboration between EAD and local NGO, Emirates Nature, WWF, has converged in Botina Island to study the other species of turtle that frequents our waters, the second largest type in the world, the giant green turtles. Sabah al khair min Botina. Nabda yawmana al thalith. وها يأتي إلينا وينسون كبير الصيادين سمعوا لك نحن جاهزون نعم نحن جاهزون والطقس جميل كما ترون من ورائنا ولدينا أمل كبير في الإمساك بأكبر عدد ممكن من السلاحف الخضراء صحيح؟ صحيح بطينة ما شاء الله رقم واحد تمام إيه تمام زين 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 أنت I'm going to just talk you through the basics of catching a turtle using the rodeo method. Turtles are big creatures, okay? A sea turtle could be between 90 and 100 kilos. That's about the same size as me. Okay, so you position yourself on the side of the vessel. You wait until the turtle is just swimming down beside the vessel here. No fear, you jump. Now, typically, there's a lot of water between you and the turtle. You know, generally about a metre, a metre and a half. So the oomph is sort of taken out of your jump. And all you're really doing is grabbing the top of the carapace around the front by the flippers. As soon as you get your hands on there, the turtle stops. Normally when people track sea turtles, they wait for them to lay eggs on a beach. They walk up to them and they put a transmitter on the back and watch where the turtle goes from there. 
But in Abu Dhabi, we don't have any beaches where sea turtles, the green sea turtles, lay eggs. That leaves us with the only alternative of catching them on their foraging grounds where they feed. You could put a net out and you could wait for hours and hours and hours for a turtle to swim into it. And then you still run the risk of that turtle getting entangled and damaging itself. So in, in many ways, catching them using this, this rodeo style on a boat is by far one, the easiest and the fastest. And as soon as we're done with the turtles, we get to release them and they're done with their process in, in the thing as well. So, uh, you know, it's part of, it, it does help that it's part of a long-term research project. It's not something we do every single day. And, uh, and the turtles have been here for years and years without any sort of adverse impacts. So th this, this particular project here in Abu Dhabi is, is amongst one of the most challenging in terms of research that's done across the planet. نعم كما تشاهدون لدينا أربع سلاحف خضراء جاهزة والفريق يعمل على تركيب الأجهزة كنا قد فقدنا الأمل ظهيرة هذا اليوم ولكن حالفنا الحظ وحققنا أهدافنا والآن كما تشاهدون الفريق يعمل على تركيب الأجهزة أجهزة التتبع We only put transmitters on turtles that are on breathing condition and are able to reproduce in the same year and the way we know this is by doing a small procedure that is called laparoscopy. So we look into the turtle and we see if she is in reproductive condition and also the sex of the turtle. And only those that are ready for reproducing that year are the ones that are putting the satellite transmitter on. So what we are doing is preparing just the transmitters to be deployed on the turtle. So I just need to cover the sensors just to avoid that they are gonna get wet during the deployment. And when the turtle is ready, we just remove this little tape that I'm putting on it and then the turtle is ready to go and the transmitter is gonna start functioning. So we use two types of transmitters. One gives us the distance as the turtle swims, and the other one gives us the depth as the turtle swims up and down the water column, actually. In addition to satellite tagging the turtles, the team was informed that the Managing Director of Environment Agency and Director General of Emirates Nature would be joining the very next day to assist with the fieldwork. Emirates Nature WWF are proud to have launched the Gulf Green Turtle Project in partnership with the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi, as well as our other partners. It's an exciting project that really goes to the core of what we are all about. It's about leading critical scientific research to support nature conservation in Abu Dhabi as well as the rest of the country. And the outcomes of this project will support the implementation of the UAE's National Plan of Action for Turtles as well as Abu Dhabi conservation strategies and spatial plans. With the wind having got up, the team a little concerned. Deliberated before sending the message on the slightly uncomfortable conditions, the message back was clear. They were on their way.
So that day was definitely one of the most memorable experiences I've had out on the field. And even though the work was challenging, we were lucky enough to have such a dedicated team working together. Getting up close to the turtles was something I'll never forget. It's very motivating when you get up close to these massive creatures. You have to work even harder for their protection. And we hope that through our work, we can inspire people and our youth to really connect with nature in the UAE and be a part of that movement for positive impact. It was a special day, particularly because it was in the year of Said, celebrating 100 years since the birth of our beloved founding father, the late Sheikh Zayed Al Nahyan. We named the two turtles we tagged that day after Sheikh Zayed's values, wisdom and respect. The key question we were all thinking about was where would wisdom and respect go to nest? Back in the office, it has been four weeks since our Hawksbill turtle nesting survey. And today, we have been greeted with some bad news. Overnight, a seasonal shamal, or strong wind, coming from the northwest over the gulf has combined with a high tide to flood Butina and most of our turtle nests on that island. I'm devastated and sad. This is one of the key offshore islands for turtle nesting. The irony is that for my PhD, we are studying a component on just this, the impacts of sea level rise and storm surge on turtle nests, so we can predict when flooding events like this may happen. It was only a few months ago where we were out here mapping just this. This is a 3D model of Butina, and you can see that over time, events like this were not predicted to happen, according to the current sea level rise projections for another 50 years. It's becoming more and more obvious. Climate change is happening now. I've plotted the eight nests from 2019, and as you can see, the box will have nested here, here, and here. The water from the storm surge came all the way up to here, which is way past the traditional and the highest safe zone for where turtles are nesting. Extreme sea level rise situations like this weren't projected to happen on Bodina for another 80 years. Yet, in 2019, we've lost all of our hawksbill turtle nests from Bodina, which is a key nesting site in Al Dafra region. I think um, sea turtles on the islands of the Al Dafra region can be a great flagship because there's still so much wonderful biodiversity to be looked after out there on those islands. When we talk about climate change, the flooding on Botena is just another example of it. Growing up in Abu Dhabi as a child, I remember kayaking and snorkeling amongst the coral reefs that our hawksbills rely on for food. They were beautiful. The colors, it was like you were in another world. But with the increasing temperature of the Gulf, as a result of climate change, we have experienced more and more bleaching events. 1998, 2013, in 2017. This is consistent with what has happened internationally with the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. What is the impact of this? Well, sponges, which are part of a coral reef ecosystem, are a key food source of hawksbills. The ocean and regional seas are going to become harder for the likes of our turtles to live in. They are survivors, though. They have been around for 200 million years. We, as our guardians, have a duty to work hard to help them adapt. While things were not looking good for our hawksbills on Butina, our greens had left the seagrass-rich waters of Al Dhafra and started moving. With our tagged green turtles over 500 kilometers away, heading around the Straits of Hermes, it was an exciting time of year for our hawksbills. The first group of hatchlings had already arrived on one of Abu Dhabi's offshore islands, so we headed there first. So as the hatchlings come out of their nests, we try to catch them one by one before they head down to the water. The incredible thing is that once they hatch, the ones at the bottom have to dig through 40 centimeters of sand to get to the surface. Once they're there, they have no mother or father to tell them what to do. They head down to the beach, climbing over obstacles and into the sea where they take their first strokes. 
As we monitored the nests around the island, it was time to check out our experiment. Our shaded hut where we had buried the eggs of the turtles that had nested in the lower intertidal zone of the beach and which would have flooded if we hadn't intervened. As we measured the hatchlings that came out of the shaded nest, they appeared to be larger, stronger, and healthier than those that had nested naturally on the beach. International studies had shown that the higher the temperature in the nest, the more females. Perhaps our shaded area could be used in future to have a more balanced sex ratio of males and females. The hatchlings face an uncertain future and are in a fight for survival as soon as they make their way out of their nest. They have no mother to look after them, and there are predators everywhere, birds, crabs, and black tip reef sharks in the shallows. Only 1% of these little guys make it to adulthood. They spend 20 years floating at sea before they come back here to nest. It is a hard environment to come into, and some don't make it far. We were back out completing our hatching success survey, something we did every year to assess how many eggs had likely hatched successfully. Typically, a hawksbill turtle lays 120 eggs, and of this, our records show 80 make it out of the nest. Every egg counts. It is true, hawksbills come back to the very spot where they nested the previous year, but where that beach is no longer suitable these creatures can adapt. Rehabilitated habitat can be very successful where existing beaches are prone to flooding. On this beach here, a rehabilitated beach, we had six successful nests this year. It goes to show that rehabilitation of beaches are a workable alternative to natural beaches that are prone to flooding. So what we're standing on right now is an artificial beach. And what we've noticed is that the turtles are coming to nest here, but they do some exploring around before they actually determine that this is a good place to nest. Now, turtles are great indicator species. It's not just the turtles themselves, but it's the habitats they rely on. So if, you, if you're protecting turtles and turtles are doing really well, that means in turn, you're also protecting seagrass beds and coral reefs and their migratory paths and everything. You know, across the planet, we've got turtle populations that are doing really, really well. And that comes on the heels of probably 30 to 40 years of good conservation action. But here's a really interesting thing, that in the Arabian Gulf, the work we've done so far isn't revealing those same patterns. And here's what I think is happening. You've got an, an, an area like the Gulf that has been hot for a very, very long time. And turtles have adapted to those temperatures. Hey guys, we have some news in our turtles, come. So guys, the latest data just came in. So this turtle, Wisdom, after we tagged her in Butina, she swam all along the coast of the UAE, round the Straits of Hormuz, and now she's a man where she actually nested. This is the first for science in this region, guys. And I think it's the first time we tagged green turtles in the UAE, and now we know that they nest in Mali. I can believe that this turtle was able to swim over 2,000 kilometers. Oh. Yes. So every time a turtle surfaces to breathe, the satellite picks up her signal, and these exactly are the points that you see on this chart. And it seems that they have this inbuilt intuition that when they need to breed and nest, they just go straight for it. Mm. This turtle also went to Pakistan and crossed the Arabian Sea, those deep waters to head to Oman. Yeah. I remember satellite tagging wisdom, very big and powerful, Madeira. <laughs> and wisdom, she's got a good name too. <laughs> we now know where the vast majority of these turtles go to lay eggs. We also know pretty much what are the migratory routes the turtles pretty much head towards Abu Dhabi and then follow the coast all the way up. 
going around and out of the Gulf, down towards Oman. So we know this. We can then work with partners in other Emirates, in other countries, to look at coastal conservation programs, maybe fisheries regulations or things like this that give us the ability to further protect sea turtles in the area where they're traveling. We also know that they're nesting in Oman, so we have a great opportunity to have some bilateral conservation programs with the authorities in Oman. In terms of genetics, finding out where they originate from. So the genetic studies that are being done now can tell us where these turtles were born and we can work on coming up with some sort of conservation programs at those nesting sites to further protect turtles here in the Gulf. It's a long-term project, so now it's really important to keep it going so we can find out some long-term trends. At the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi, we want to be a global leader in marine conservation. We have no choice but to study our green turtles further to answer this key question. Do all our green turtles go to Oman or do some nest elsewhere? Additional research will answer this question. And we have a very passionate team to do this job, to continue to study these wonderful sea creatures. For our hawksbills, if we look at the nesting data for the past 17 years, we have had a stable number. And this is probably due to the species itself and the nesting islands and coral reef habitat being protected. But with adaptation measures to support, we need to keep monitoring and rehabilitating to give the species as much chance of survival in our changing world. As we look to the future, my heart is smiling that we have young Emirati scientists taking responsibility for our natural heritage and our turtles people that have just got all the passion and now all the knowledge and all the skills. And to think that that is where sea turtle conservation is leading towards. You've got all these people who, who are passionate, who care, and know what to do to protect them. I think turtles in the, in, in the Emirates have a really, really good outlook. For our green turtles, we will continue to monitor where our most recent tag turtles go. And after the trail that wisdom and respect showed us, we will work with our regional partners on identifying and giving protection to additional key foraging and breeding areas. We're excited to continue to work together with EAD and our partners to enhance our knowledge about marine life of the UAE. Turtles are an important piece of that jigsaw puzzle and are interconnected with the wider marine environment. We will keep working on the threats to turtles. Don't dump your plastic on the beach or fish in an illegal manner. We need to really help these guys and give them the best shot at survival. And personally, I am going to work hard to finish my PhD. We have lots more to learn. The temperature data of the nests as an example. Looking ahead, I feel like it's my duty to protect these guys. It is in my DNA. We are committed and determined to have a world where our turtles can grow to adult size without the threat of plastic. Having seen the impacts of climate change and plastics on our turtles, we will continue to work tirelessly to ensure that these magnificent creatures remain here within the UAE waters. It is our duty as the environmental guardian of the marine areas to ensure that they do so. As the three of us said farewell to Botlina for another year, I couldn't help but feel a connection to our ancestors and be proud that with our colleague, our friends, and our passionate team members, we were working hard to fulfill our duty to our home, Al Zafra, the wildest area of Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates.
to bring hope to a life like the promise of the Adonai.